I'm Marty Stauffer. The great age of dinosaurs, when reptiles ruled the Earth, ended more than a million years ago. Now, only four major groups of them survive in North America. Snakes, turtles, lizards, and crocodilians. But from the way many people react to them, you'd think that each remaining reptile were out to rule the world all over again. Reptiles have always had a bad name. Are they just scaly monsters, ugly at best and dangerous at worst? Or are they highly specialized forms of life, often solitary and elusive, but for the most part harmless as leaves on a tree? Many of these cold-blooded creatures share our own backyards, and the basic pattern of their lives differs little from robins, squirrels, or other animals with which we feel more comfortable. Yet they've held us spellbound for centuries in a way that birds and mammals never have. Why are we so fearful of, and yet so fascinated by, these remarkable reptiles? All reptiles are cold-blooded creatures. Their body temperature depends completely on their surroundings. Many snakes can survive winter only by hibernating in caves where the temperature stays above freezing. And frequently, they do this in large numbers. As springtime warms the rocks around these limestone sinkholes in Manitoba, the red-sided garter snakes that winter here emerge by the thousands, more snakes than can be seen at one time anywhere else in the world. Warm weather also triggers a strong mating instinct. As many as 30 to 100 males may tangle in a writhing ball around a single female. Besides the warmth generated by so many bodies during the winter, these mass hibernations have a second survival advantage. Weakened by eight months without food, the snakes do not need to waste energy traveling in search of a mate. Though not many of us would care to join them. For the snakes, a snake pit is as natural as a day at the beach.
Warmth is important to reptiles, both inside and outside their bodies. Though they depend mainly on sight, smell, and taste, some snakes, especially pit vipers like this Pacific rattlesnake, have a special organ for sensing the presence of warm-blooded animals. The rattlesnake must recently have had a meal, or else is still sluggish from the cool night, or the young mouse would never get away with being this foolish. Finally, the mouse seems to sense that it has awakened a sleeping giant. The rattlesnake's initial response may be slow, but once set in motion, its instincts are lightning swift. Fortunately for the mouse, it was just out of reach of those venomous fangs. But the rattles warn that the snake is now totally on the alert. The mouse will get no second chance. The scaly outer skin of reptiles is one factor that enabled them to become the first vertebrates to succeed on dry land. A snake is basically a legless lizard. This rattlesnake not only crawls on its belly like a reptile, but crawls with its belly, using its flat ventral scales to push the curves of its body along smoothly. Its rattles are modified scales. One rattle is added whenever the snake sheds its skin, which may be several times a year. Man is not the only mammal that learns to be wary of snakes. The red fox kits have disturbed a bull snake sleeping outside their den. This relative of the gopher snake is harmless, but it puts on a terrific act, mimicking a rattlesnake as it hisses and vibrates the tip of its tail. It makes believers out of the fox pups, scaring one of them back into the den, which in turn scares its jumpy brother. After a while, the immediate fright subsides and fear becomes just another form of fun a game that will make these pups all the more ready for their next encounter with a snake. After all, the next one might have real rattles on its tail.
I came across one of the more remarkable reptiles I've ever seen one day while I was out filming something else. Not only had this gopher snake just caught a mouse, but it was eating it with one of its two heads. Such genetic malformations are rare in nature. It's even more unlikely that a freak like this would live to maturity in the wild. An extra head is a handicap, not an advantage. One head does most of the work, while the second one seems to be just along for the ride. Most snakes do not eat very often, but when they do, they eat a lot. Their mouths are constructed to consume prey much bigger around than they are. Fur, bones, tail, and all. Like most snakes, the gopher snake is useful to man in keeping rodents and other pests under control. So it's too bad that the second head cannot hunt on its own. When is a snake not a snake? When it's a legless lizard, like this glass lizard. Snakes are thought to be descended from lizards, and perhaps this is the remnant of an intermediate stage. It prefers wet meadows and pine flatlands, also a favorite haunt of the bobcat. The glass lizard has a tongue like a snake, but snakes are virtually deaf, while most lizards hear quite well. In motion, there's little difference between a snake and a legless lizard, at least to the bobcat. This would seem to be an easy snack for the bobcat, but nature is always ready to surprise us when we least expect it. Just as the cat is about to take its first bite, its meal suddenly appears to be in two places at once. The tail end thrashes off down the stream bank, while the front half holds very still. Like any self-respecting cat, the bobcat goes for what's moving. As it stalks off with its prize, little does it realize that this contest has two winners. Unlike snakes, most lizards can shed their tails at will, allowing them to break off at a certain weak point and later regenerating an entire new one. Another lizard with typical and remarkable reptilian features is the anole, often called the Carolina anole. Whereas snakes usually shed their skins and leave them behind, lizards such as the anole often swallow theirs in pieces. For a short time, the shedding skin is like a straitjacket, but not so much that it interferes with the anole's incredible agility. This climbing lizard is more advanced than either snakes or glass lizards in its ability to move each eye separately. But its most amazing feature 
is its ability to change the color of its skin. The survival enhancing decorations of the male anole include a brightly colored throat pouch or dewlap. Usually it's folded up, but when distended, it serves both to ward off rivals and to attract the object of his reptilian affection. The anoles are members of the iguana family and are also related to chameleons. Many other lizards, both male and female, display prominent throat pouches. Its only native relative is the American crocodile. For me, both of these crocodilians are impressive living reminders of the primitive power of prehistoric reptiles. And one of the most primeval sounds on Earth is the mating bellow of a male alligator, the voice of a past so remote that man plays no part in its memory. Alligators mate in the water, the male herding the female in circles until she submits. Later, on land, she will pile decaying vegetation into a mound, which, as it decomposes, automatically incubates her several dozen eggs. Swampland inhabitants of our southern states, these great reptiles have made a comeback where protected but still must struggle to hold their own against poachers and loss of habitat. We drain their swamps, we kill them for their hides, yet unless wounded or guarding a nest, they present little threat to man. It takes a number of years for any crocodilian to mature, and like most reptiles, they continue to grow throughout their relatively long lifespans. Let's hope that the offspring of these alligators will always have a place to bask in the sun. All reptiles must breathe air, and turtles are no exception. Even the softshell turtle, which spends much of its time buried in shallow riverbeds, does not breathe water. But neither does it need to leave its bed in the mud just so long as its incredibly long neck can stretch all the way up to the surface. Named for its thick leathery shell, the soft shell is one of several types of turtles completely adapted to aquatic life. Another is the snapping turtle, 
which lacks the long neck of the soft shell, but it more than compensates with its aggressive nature and patient stealth. To the unwary eye, it looks just like a floating log. Although their diets include quite a bit of plant matter, both soft shell and snapping turtles feed primarily on fish and other aquatic creatures. Unlike other reptiles, turtles lack teeth. They depend on the sharp edges of their beak-like jaws to capture their food. Fish seem perfectly shaped for their watery world, but the unusual structure of turtles reminds us of the great range of shapes and sizes of reptiles in general, and the intriguing variety of adaptations they have made to almost every environment. Reptiles of one sort or another are found from subtropical swamps to arctic tundra, from the sea to the mountains, and from lake bottoms to the driest desert. Though it is now endangered, the desert tortoise provides a good example of this contrast. Its rituals are those of a land animal. Here, two males meet and battle each other during the mating season. The object of this armored wrestling match is not only to defend a territory and win a female, but to render the opponent helpless. The weapon is a horny projection from their lower shells, called a gular shield. Each tries to wedge his underneath the other. Like prehistoric knights in armor, one finally succeeds. The desert hosts many dangers, and the most relentless is the sun itself. Unless the loser can right himself quickly, he is doomed. Meanwhile, winner takes all. Scavengers quickly reduce the defeated male to shell and bone. While not far away, life goes on. 
A female tortoise digs a hole in the sand in which to deposit her eggs. For reptiles, eggs enclosed by a protective shell were evolution's passport to a life on land. Amphibians must still rely on water to harbor their jelly-like eggs and vulnerable larval stages. But reptiles, with their scaly skins and ancient instincts, were the first creatures to evolve methods of internal fertilization and to develop eggs that were viable outside of water. Within each egg is an independent new life, preparing to take its place in the increasingly precarious balance of nature. The slow steps taken by this female tortoise to protect and provide for those undeveloped lives are, in a sense, echoes of the first steps taken by all reptiles toward the instinct for motherhood that we value so much in mammals. One of the things I've enjoyed most about studying the natural world is that the better you get to know it, the fewer things there are to be afraid of. Reptiles, like mixed human feelings, are with us to stay, mysterious reminders of the primeval wilderness from which we ourselves evolved. Hearing an Everglades alligator bellow at night or watching a desert tortoise lay her eggs gives me a strong sense of how ancient and powerful the forces of nature are and how delicately beautiful the ways in which she answers evolutionary challenges. These creatures deserve not only our fascination, but our respect as remarkable reptiles. I'm Marty Stauffer. Until next time, enjoy our wild America.